This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. Andrew Lanning here, the security guy. Uh, we're, we're going to be having Brian Tuscan join us today for another episode of Security Matters Hawaii. Brian is the uh, chief security officer for Microsoft, uh, kind of newly appointed. He's been in there since uh, Q4, and we are remote today. We had a little bit of a technical glitch there with our audio before we got started, so I'm sorry. We will give you the full episode today, so please stay with us. Hey, Brian, aloha. Thanks for joining us today. Aloha, Andrew. Thanks for having me on. Right on, man. Sorry, we're starting. We got to start a little bit late. I know you're a busy guy. Um, you know, uh, you you've done always kept uh, Hawaii in your heart, and and came back and given a lot of presentations over the years to different groups here. And I appreciate that. So thanks again for joining us here today. Um, for the audience that hasn't been involved with some of them, could you go ahead and just give them, you know, as much as you want to share about sort of your background and uh, how it led to the office that you hold today? Sure. So uh, I'm a local boy. I, I grew up uh, in Hawaii, uh, mainly on the windward side, Kailua, Kaneohe, Waimanalo. Uh, my, my early start to my career was in law enforcement. So I was with the Honolulu Police Department. I got in when I was 23. Loved the job. It, it was uh, one of the most fulfilling opportunities I had from a career perspective and, and I had a great time. Uh, put in four and a half years, and I had an opportunity to lateral over to the great Pacific Northwest, just outside of Seattle, a small city called Redmond, uh, that Redmond, Washington. So I was working for the Redmond Police Department. Uh, they had this small computer company in their backyard called Microsoft. Uh, I was somewhat technical uh, in, in my cop days, and Working for Redmond Police, they were very progressive. Our chief, uh, Steve Harris, was, was progressive. We always had the latest, greatest technology and tools. So as a detective for the city of Redmond, I was the one always called to do the case investigations where Microsoft was the victim of some sort of crime. And I got to know a lot of people here. Uh, an opportunity popped up 18 years ago, and I've been here ever since. Uh, the Trajectory uh, for, for my career path, leaving law enforcement, coming to the private sector, uh, the, the transition was pretty smooth because I, I was ready to take on a big challenge. I, I loved the corporation, loved Microsoft. I saw they were doing a lot of amazing things. Uh, I was always into technology and innovation, and to do that in a security perspective, it was, it was like a, a dream job. So over the 18 years, I held a lot of roles and responsibilities, all in physical security. So I just want to note to, to the audience out there, as the uh, the CSO, it's it's all physical security. We 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 have uh, uh, Brett Arsenal, who's the corporate vice president, and chief information security officer. Uh, he, he heads up the, the whole cyber and network security. So I just wanted to say, what I'm talking about is specific to the physical side. Uh, so from investigations, which was my core background and experience, uh, moved my way up, had uh, operations, and then I pulled in a technology system integration and consulting type of work. Uh, been been doing that for, for years. And uh, October 1st, I, I was uh, given the helm to, to run the organization as the chief security officer, and I'm just having a blast. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. Um, I know Mike's still having a blast out there too. Mike Howard, your your predecessor, uh, he still does a lot of pro, kind of promoting lead leadership type stuff out there. So I still follow him. I'm glad to see him still active. Looks like he's having fun. You're having fun. Um, so from for someone like me with a, a much smaller view of the world, um, try to give our audience a sense of, of of what you're looking at to have so much fun. Because when I think of global enterprise. I, I don't know if everyone like myself is boggled by the sorts of numbers of, of places and people that you take responsibility for on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, sure. The footprint or the scale of our corporation is humongous. So we, we operate in 190 countries. Wow. And uh, we have about 135,000 full-time employees. If you throw contractors in there, it's another 90-plus thousand and operating in almost every country on, on the planet, it creates some challenges. But if you look at 
deploying a security program from the operations, the investigations, systems, tools. You have to look at it from an enterprise mindset, meaning will it work across the enterprise? Mm. And I'll just plug uh, Microsoft's network. I mean, I, I work for Microsoft, but everything is built on our platform from, from our OS uh, to the cloud, to all the tools and technologies, third-party tools. It, it all sits and integrates and stitches well within the platform. So when I say enterprise, whatever we deploy here in Redmond, it will work in Beijing, or it will work in Kuwait, it will work in all, all of our locations, from whether it's uh, access control, digital video, uh, software solutions. It, it has to scale. Mm. So if you're running a smaller operation, no matter how small, you just got to ensure what you have is it scalable and because a portfolio can grow. I've had many discussions with local security professionals uh, in Hawaii. Uh, always always had uh, a, a good experience working with, with the professionals there. They, they, they know what they're doing. It's just if you're getting into the industry, always look at if I'm going to spend money on hardware and infrastructure, it's very expensive. Ensure that it's scalable. Ensure that it's been around for a while. Ensure mm. that they have 24-7 support uh, because you can go to these events where they have uh, security technology and, you, you know, the usual suspects. And you can have companies that were there one year and the next year they're gone. So mm. really understand mm. the partners that you bring in to help you. And that's, that's really key, finding strategic partners to help you deploy. Yeah, and I know that you've, um, you know, we've had many discussions over the years where you've, been able to sample a lot of different types of tools in an environment and seeing what scales and what doesn't, what will work for particular applications and what won't. Um, do you still get um, hands down on some of that stuff? I know you're, you know, a, you probably got some different roles today. So how, how are you, um, I guess, overseeing that, that stuff that you were so passionate about all those years? You have a, 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 a team, broader team. Uh, how's, how's that working for you these days, I guess, is, would be the question. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And actually, from the the pre me taking over, the the way we've managed security was very traditional in the sense where not only the security group, the physical security group, would have an operational team, but yeah. there was also a technology component to that. Okay. And I owned that technology component for years, where we had system integration, security consulting technology development, incubation, innovation, all that stuff. But as many of uh, the security professionals on the call know today, you, you, can, you may lose focus on what your core life safety objectives are mm. if you're busy out tinkering with technology. So the reorganization, uh, the group that I'm in, it, it's, it's a group uh, combined with the Microsoft's real estate and facilities team. Ah. So the combined group is now called Real Estate and Security. Uh, my boss, uh, who heads up all of real estate and, and, and security, is Michael Ford. And he his vision is security operations is its own functioning pillar. So that would include uh, field site security, regional security management, uh, virtual operations centers, uh, risk and resiliency, and you have the investigative part, we have intelligence, uh, threat management, background screening, core investigations, the, then executive protection, uh, protective intelligence, all of the, the core services that you would, you would find in many uh, big corporations. And we peeled out all of the technology piece. So if you look at the technology wow. as an overarching umbrella, they, you have system, uh, inter, you get systems, you get integration, consulting, technology. That went to a shared service organization. And then the future looking uh, aspects went, moved to a, a peer organization of mine. It's called the Center of Innovation. Oh. So the Center of Innovation uh, is run by Mike Poins. You may, you may know Mike. He's yeah. a senior director, heads the Center of Innovation. His job is purely focused on where is the future, not only for security, but for real estate and environments. And so where are we headed? If you, if, if you think of a lot of organizations, sometimes security is within the real estate function. A lot of mm -hmm. times it's separate. Uh, the reason why it made so, so much sense to combine the efforts is in the technology space. When you look at an environment, whether it's an IoT device, 
that's connected to a HVAC or a low voltage uh, connector to, to something that's at a facility, and then there's a security IoT device. Why don't you just all combine that strategy together? So you have center of innovation that looks at the future of, of where we're going to head. Then you have a shared services peer organization group. So you know Mike Fattis, who used to work mm -hmm. for me in the systems group. Sure. He's in the shared services group. He ensures that we have the right technology in place so my operators can focus on operations and not tinkering around with technology. And now wow. if, if you're a geek or a nerd like me that loves technology, that doesn't mean I'm out of the loop in, in innovation. But my team, they can focus on their core, which is life safety, high value asset protection, mm -hmm. and they can come up with the requirements. The center of innovation will look at the requirements and say, okay, the industry says this is where we're headed, such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, robotics. They go out there and do, they, meaning the center of innovation, the program project managers, technologists, can find us the best technology, know that it works in, in, in our environment, and then they can give us areas so we can pilot, we can test something out, and it will always lead, whatever we do, to an enterprise release. So we could do it anywhere in the world in our portfolio. That's amazing. So when you, um, let, well, so as, a, as a techno geek, I think I'd be submitting 50 requests a day. How, how do you... How do you sort of prioritize, does it come from your team, like, hey, here's what we really need to do, and then you'll kind of send that technology request in? So that's a great question. The huge influx of really smart people working in, in, in the security industry, yeah. they have all kinds of ideas. <laughs> and if you count the countless environments where you have conferences and events and speakers and you go out, and you spread your team out, and they'll all come back, like you said, with 50 ideas. I saw this, I saw that. Mm -hmm. So how we tackled that, there was a group that I uh, owned that moved over to the Center of Innovation, and we, we, we called it the Strategic Project Management Office, the, wow. the PMO. We brought in a strategic consultant, Accenture, to come in, ah. and what they were able to do was build a PMO model so we're not bringing on any new technology until it's completely vetted by a review process to ensure whatever we're bringing into the table, first, it sits on our platform, it's scalable and extensible on our cloud. Uh, we do a deep dive on the company. We, we do re research and review and assessments on current clients that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if it's a new technology, we'll pilot it, but we'll, we'll ensure that the company is going to be around for a while if, it, if it's that innovative. Okay. And he has to go through this huge vetting process, but you won't waste a lot of money by deploying something and finding out it doesn't work. Yeah. So that, that's, uh, we came up with a really cool PMO model, and it, it works beautifully. And now that's rolled out not just only for security, but all for real estate uh, systems uh, uh, integration work that we're trying to roll that out. Uh, for, for the environment. That's awesome. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that changing environment because I know there's a little a little minor construction project up there. First, we're gonna take a break for about one minute, pay a couple of bills, and we'll be right back with Brian Tuscan. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha.
Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're talking with uh, Microsoft's new CSO, Brian Tuscan. Uh, Brian's been up there about 18 years, and uh, he was just kind of taking us through the way that they're structured to deliver the services that they deliver out of his department today. And uh, you, were, you talked a little bit about real estate, and um, I've definitely seen some presentations, Brian, on the, uh, I think there's a new, a, a new campus. I don't know if it's a, 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 a program or, or a redesign, but um, take us a little bit through uh, what you guys expect to see out of the new campus uh, that I, I guess is under construction currently, and maybe set me wrong if I'm, uh, uh, I'm not too sure where, where that program's at currently. Yes, so Microsoft is building a brand new campus. Uh, you could just type into YouTube, Microsoft's new campus. You can see a very short video that will go through what it will look like. We're using existing uh, campus land. Uh, we just had a, a, a demolition of building two, one of the, mo the original buildings. Wow. And when they raise uh, all, all of those buildings, it's going to be replaced with, I believe, 18 brand new buildings. Uh, there's going to be a uh, sound transit train that will uh, connect from Seattle okay. and then other uh, uh, nearby cities, which will allow, I, I would say, people that want to live the, the big city uh, feel and environment, but they can, they can come work in Redmond. Uh, catch the train and drop it will drop you right off in the campus. Uh, we have a shuttle system, and uh, they can they can get around. You don't even need a car, and and head back to to Seattle or or if you live up north or south, uh, say in Tacoma or Everett area. Uh, and and the project will take I believe three to five years. You'll you'll have some of the buildings done in three years. It's a multi-billion dollar project. And you can just, you know, Google it on Bing and you, you'll see all the details. <laughs> Google it on Bing. It's your, um, so uh, as the guy in charge of the spaces and the bodies that are sort of um, going to be occupying that space, it seemed pretty open to me, um, the, the, the plan that I saw, the, the platform. Um, what's your vision for like sort of securing those folks in that open environment? Because it seemed like you'll have um, maybe not necessarily a door that everyone had to walk through to enter the campus, for example. They climbed off the train, they're there, and they may be an employee, maybe not. Um, where will you start to put your, your c controls in place to, to sort of, um, you know, keep that community of workforce, you know, safe and secure uh, from the general public? Or is there a feeling of just opening it up? You know how Hawaii is, everything's really open out here on the campuses here. So what's your, what's your sort of vision for putting that together? Well, well, the vision ultimately for the real estate and security team is to create the most connected, accessible, sustain, sustainable, and secure environment. Wow. If you take the, those four uh, uh, beacons of, of the North Star, and then how do you design a modern campus so it's not just the same old, same old? Mm -hmm. And that's where Mike Foynes' team and Center of Innovation are working to look at areas that will make it accessible, secure, but in a different way. We would love to get rid of badges. Yeah. The old school where you have a badge. Using some sort of biometric two-factor authentication, we call frictionless uh, 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 environments and access. Using smart cameras, using mm. the cloud that can detect who you are. People know you use an iPhone, it, it's facial recognition, it'll open it up. Uh, for you, so you don't even need a password. Same with uh, Windows Hello. Mm -hmm. Windows Hello will let you access your your uh, computer uh, just by your face. So imagine that being used uh, in a camera. If you come up on a door, they see your face, it will allow you in. If it sees somebody behind you, they don't recognize you, the door won't open. Ah. If you have a visitor that comes in through an app, you can authenticate through identity management, some biometric that you have on there, and and there, there are companies working on identity management using blockchain so you can have a, a uh, trusted uh, identity. Mm -hmm. And just imagine mm -hmm. you come visit us. Uh, Andrew Lannings could come in a visit. He has an app. He signs in. Some sort of biometric authenticates who you are. You walk into the lobby. The lobby will already recognize who you are. I get a text that you're in the lobby. It may even just say through a wayfinder on your phone or some sort of wearable. Mm -hmm. Hey, just go to the store. It will open. Know that you're there. 
and it will show you where to go. So wow. we, we, this is what, where we think the future is headed. We're, we're ready doing proof of concepts uh, for what I'm talking about. And, and we just envision that the future is going to look this way. And then, of course, you know, you and, you and I are longer in the tooth. We, we, <laughs> we understand how old school technology is. But look, look at all the millennials and, and the, the, the digital natives that are coming up. They grew up with technology. And they have a different expectation. Uh, mm, the gig sure. economy, the the people that just don't really need an office. So we have to prepare for this new gig economy and the way of doing dif- uh, work differently. And how do you have an, a good employee experience where it's connected, accessible, sustainable, and secure? Wow. Is um, will the idea be that the um, the, the new campus development, the, the technology that you build there, you will scale? to the other facilities out across the globe as well, so that you'll, you know, as you implement maybe like frictionless access control on campus, you'll be able to roll that to perhaps the stores or to the other facilities that you have where you have people physically on site on a, on a, on a smaller campus perhaps, but in a facility? Absolutely. Uh, we're looking at our campus and a brand new campus is being built in Herzliya, Israel, uh, uh, Singapore, uh, China. So, so we have the vision to roll it out beyond just Redmond okay. and eventually rolling it out globally. Now, of course, you have to understand there are countries that have higher privacy, EU, yeah. where there are certain things you may not be able to use, such as fa- facial recognition, but there are other forms of biometrics that will allow you to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it's a big project. Yeah. And we, we're, we're be the guinea pigs testing it out. And we're going to share our findings uh, with the industry. It, we, I think the, the legacy that I want to have here for, for the many years I, ho- I hope to stay as the steward of this position as a CSO would be to be innovative using technology to help make the world a safer place mm-hmm. and uh, in, in easier access. Because right now, the industry, every security professional out there knows it, it's been the same old, same old for the last 50 years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think... That we've all struggled also with that that whole problem of of it's really difficult to move the needle and I I would I, w- I think there's a bit of, been a bit of vision lacking I think there's been a bit of technology lacking but I also think that the manufacturers haven't really done their job to push things forward maybe you know I don't have visibility on all the investment capital they sunk into the things that we purchase and use and maybe they need 50 years to get paid back it doesn't seem like it should take that long to me. Um, what, um, what, I guess, let me ask you this, what, how many opportunities come your folks way to sort of be that test bed, um, that, that are, that are valid? You know, I mean, I'm sure you get a, a thousand requests, but how many of them in your estimation filter their way up and say, Hey, these, these 10 out of a thousand are really worth looking at. And we can, we can afford to spend the time maybe doing some beta testing or whatever. That's a great question. And I've spent a lot of time, money with the one-offs, and we, we were just, I wouldn't say spinning our wheels, but it's really hard. Mm. So we developed strategic partnerships with, with big corporations. One of, one of the, the companies uh, we have a strategic partnership with is with Johnson Controls. Oh, awesome. Uh, Johnson Controls has an R&D group in Israel, and Israel, they're, they're the uh, startup nation. There's a book called Startup Nation, mm-hmm. and, and they, they just know how to start up these companies. So Johnson Control will do all the vetting of 800 some odd new companies that come out and they'll boil it down to the top 10 and then wow. they'll share it with us because it's already vetted, it's already tested. And then we can come in and say, okay, this is, this is what we'd like to see. So it's having strategic partners like Johnson Control, but also a Securitas. Now mm-hmm. Securitas, a lot of people, especially in Hawaii, they probably just look at them as, they're, they're the man guarding at the airport and, mm-hmm. and uh, physical security man guarding, right? Just guarding. They're a very innovative company. Uh, mm-hmm. I had the pleasure of going to Malmo, Sweden uh, to visit their CEO and, and uh, executives. And they have an innovation center there, which blew me away. Wow. In the work that they're doing in Western Europe, Northern Europe, where they stitch technology into guarding services that is completely blows the, the, the change of the paradigm on physical security guarding. So mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. If you have a guard showing up 
for a glass breakage, they show up, okay, somebody threw a brick through it. Well, since the guard's there, they also have experience in to getting uh, a glass repair to come in, mm-hmm. or they know how to do a low voltage uh, uh, wire repair or whatnot. I mean, it's more than just a security guard. It's ah. a service mm-hmm. and saves money. You can replace. In Europe, it's really, really different how they use private security. They augment the police department there. So I'm not sure if the U.S. is ready for that, but they mm. will augment the police department where the cops will even show up. So strategic partners, uh, the big companies, Securitas, Johnson Control, uh, that's how you can, I would say, vet a lot of technology so you're not just out spinning your wheels, wasting your time, and you can have a scalable solution uh, for, for our industry. Awesome, Brian. Well, we've got a couple of minutes. Why don't you give us... Um Maybe a closing statement there from, um, you know, you've taken over. Uh, what do you think the, the future holds? What's the best advice you can give for the, the enterprises maybe or the, 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 the groups that are going to serve under you? What's the sort of the best way that they can understand what, what the future is from, from your vision and the way that they can participate in it um, and not be those, those guys that are still, you know, deploying the stuff that's 50 years old and is on the way out the door? Well, I, I would say you have to have a growth mindset meaning you have to be open to new ideas, looking at doing things differently. Ask, uh, but verify. Trust, but verify also. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't just have someone tell you, okay, this thing is going to change how, how you do business. Well, show me. <laughs> I, I always ask uh, new suppliers or solution providers when they pitch something to me, I always ask, who's your biggest enterprise customer? Like, who is about as big as us? And then give me their name because I want to talk to them. I might fly a team down to look at it and vet it. And I'm all for innovation. If somebody's really new and starting off and they don't they, they want me to be the first client, it's really going to be hard to to get out of the gate on that. Yeah. Uh, but getting back to the growth mindset, uh, trying to change the industry for the better and sharing. We're, we're probably one of the most transparent companies of sharing because a lot of people are our customers. So our customers, they, they own our OS, they, they, they sit in our cloud, mm-hmm. they're using our products. So anyone that uh, is a customer of ours, you're a friend of ours, that if you want to see how we're doing stuff, uh, just give, reach out to me. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I get back when people ping me. I might not directly call you back, but I might have somebody from my team. So just look, look me up, Brian Tuscan on LinkedIn, and uh, let's connect. Yeah, I think the sharing is so important, Brian. And there's a lot of folks, I think, that don't have that mindset. And I think sharing is, is really important for growth, especially in the security space, because we all have people we love and care about. And I, 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 for one, really appreciate what Microsoft's done over the years. I've been, uh, been paying attention, as you know. As you know. <laughs> but um, give Brian a shout. Um, give Microsoft a shout. Uh, you are, you are a, a part of the ecosystem. And uh, we'd like you to participate, because security matters. Thank you. Aloha.